Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the adductor group muscles. We're going to identify the five major ones, and then we're going to look at their origins, insertions, their nervous innervation, and then also their actions. Okay? And we'll also see a few other aspects of that as we go along. Now back to this slide that we saw a couple videos ago. Uh, remember that the thigh muscles are divided according to their function. And so in the previous video, we talked about the quadriceps femoris group. That's the anterior compartment of the thigh. And the compartmentalization is due to the fascial or deep fascial extensions of these intermuscular septa. Um, now, this group here in blue, this is the medial uh, muscle group in the thigh. These are the adductors. And so we see a few of them labeled here, here uh, closest to the uh, the anterior compartment. This is the adductor longus muscle. This very large one is the adductor magnus muscle. And then over here medially is the gracilis. Okay? So we're going to be looking at these muscles and then there's a couple others that we can't see there yet. All right. So adductor group. So these are a group of muscles that collectively facilitate adduction. And a few of them have some other functions as well. Now adduction, recall, is basically when you take your thigh and move them closer to the midline. Okay? Abduction with a B, ABD, would actually be bringing the thighs laterally, spreading your legs away from the midline. This is bringing them back toward the midline. And so we have five adductor group muscles. Let's first identify them. Now, when we're looking at them, we can more or less divide them into layers. So we have three that are more or less superficial, where we wouldn't need to actually peel off any muscles to see them. Uh, the most superior one is called the pectineus. Here's our pectineus. Beneath that is the adductor longus. And then this one, which let me actually move this table out of the way for a minute. This one is really more on the medial aspect, although usually you can see it in an anterior view. This one is the gracilis, this really long, thin muscle. Now, if we were to actually remove mostly the pectineus and the adductor longus, and of course the quadriceps because they lie on top, we would see two deeper adductor muscles. So this one, the smaller one, is the adductor brevis. And this really big one, it actually extends all the way from here, all the way down, all this is the adductor magnus. Okay? Now a few things about some of the names, um, adductor longus, brevis, and magnus. Normally brevis is used to describe a muscle in a group of muscles that's the smallest okay? or the shortest. And if we actually look at the adductor brevis from its uh, origin to its insertion, it is the shortest. It has the greatest brevity. Okay, so brevis. Longus usually refers to the longest one. Uh, and in general, the adductor longus is the longest muscle. And then magnus normally refers to a muscle that's just plain big. Okay, um, it's about as wide as it is long. Um, it's obviously not a square shape, but it's pretty wide extends pretty far down. So this is the biggest one by far. So it gets the name Magnus. Okay. All right. So let's actually go over some of the origins and insertions. We'll begin with the pectineus. So the origin of the pectineus is on the pectineal line of the superior pubic ramus. So right here we have, this would actually be the patient's right pubis. This region would be the superior part of that pubic ramus. And so that would be the origin of the pectineus. And it extends down here, and it actually has about the highest insertion on the femur. And this region of the femur where it inserts is called the pectineal line of the femur. Again, it's named the pectineal line just because the pectineus inserts there. Okay. Now the action of this muscle is going to be in hip flexion and adduction. So of course it's going to be an adductor because it's in this group, but it also can facilitate hip flexion. Now remember, hip flexion would be if you brought your thigh in front of you, okay? So basically, if you tried to knee someone in front of you, throw a knee in front of you, that would be hip flexion. So the person's thigh would be coming out of the screen here. And that has to do with the fact that um, the insertion on the pectineal line is slightly more anterior, okay? Even though it's medial, it's slightly more anterior. And so being an anterior insertion, it's going to have a little bit of hip flexion there as well. 
The second one here, this is the adductor longus. So its origin is up here, uh, medial to that of the pectineus. So its origin is just the pubic body right here. As it extends toward the insertion, this one actually gets thicker. Um, and then its insertion is all this on the femur, um, the distal two-thirds of the linea aspera. Okay, So that's going to be the insertion of the adductor longus. Now, in terms of action, it's going to be basically the same as that of the pectineus. Of course, it's going to be an adductor. But because the insertion is slightly more anterior, it's not like right on the front, but it's slightly more anterior, um, it's going to have some degree of hip flexion. All right. All right. Now for the innervation, let's go back and actually cover those briefly. The pectineus actually has two um, sources of innervation. One is the femoral nerve and the other is the obturator nerve. Now all of these share a common uh, nerve for innervation and that's the obturator nerve. If we go back to this slide, recall that the medial compartment right here of the thigh generally is going to be innervated by the obturator nerve, but I did mention that there could be some exceptions. Um, this is one of them. Um, a portion of the pectineus is innervated by the femoral nerve, okay? but again, it shares that obturator nerve innervation. And the adductor longus, pretty much purely innervated by the obturator nerve. Let's keep going. The gracilis originates even more medially than the adductor longus, so its origin is going to be the inferior pubic ramus. So we've got superior pubic ramus, pubic body, and inferior pubic ramus. And it's going to extend all the way down the medial aspect of the thigh. It's a very long, thin muscle. And then it's going to insert on the medial tibia at a place that's pretty much called the pes anserine. We'll talk about that um, in just a minute. Uh, the pes anserine is actually a common insertion for a few muscles, and I've got a picture of that. Uh, the innervation in the gracilis is the obturator nerve, and it's going to uh, actually have two actions. One of them course is adduction, but it's also going to facilitate a little bit of hip flexion as well. Um, and that has to do with the fact that the uh, muscle actually runs a little bit anteriorly, just like these two do, although these are not the major muscles of hip flexion. Okay, So those are our three superficial muscles, Okay, three superficial muscles of the adductors. Now if we were to take these three off, particularly the pectineus and the adductor longus, we would better be able to see uh, these two deeper adductors, which are the adductor brevis and the very large adductor magnus. So let's actually uh, go take a look at those. Start with the adductor magnus. This has two origins and two insertions. The origins of the adductor magnus are going to be the ischial ramus and the ischial tuberosity. Now remember, this right here is pretty much the ischial ramus. Um, there would also be that bump there that would uh, basically rough bump would be the ischial tuberosity, but in general just the ischium is going to be the origin of the adductor magnus. Now the insertion is pretty wide, and it pretty much goes down practically the entire length of the femur. Okay, um, The first insertion is really just going to be the linea aspera, so it's going to insert all on that. And then also on something called the adductor tubercle, adductor tubercle is down here. Now the reason you have this hole right here, remember this is the adductor hiatus. If you go back and look at the adductor canal video, remember that this is a hole through which uh, the femoral artery and the femoral vein pass through, and when they pass through this um, into this region of the back of the knee, uh, they would actually become the popliteal artery and the popliteal vein. Okay? But this is the adductor hiatus. And you have to have that hole there so some of the vessels and also the saphenous nerve can cross through. And so this insertion right here would be on the adductor tubercle, and the rest of it is pretty much just on the back of the femur, more or less, on the linea aspera. Now, it's not completely posterior. It's more medial, but it's, an, it's a more posterior insertion than any of these first three. And that actually plays a role with its functions. Okay? Um, of course, it's going to be a hip adductor. However, it can play a role in actually flexion or extension of the hip, and it depends on where the muscle fibers attach. Okay? Um, in fact, some of the fibers that attach a little bit more posteriorly, they actually can be synergistic with the hamstrings. In fact, if you're working um, any of the uh, hip extension uh, workouts, such as a deadlift that works the hamstrings, you're also working a portion of the adductor magnus. Um, the thing is, the adductor magnus is not a true hamstring muscle, but 
parts of it are synergistic. Other parts of it can actually facilitate hip flexion, weak hip flexion, however. Okay, so a very large muscle it depends on where you are on the on the muscle fibers as to what the action is. But generally, very powerful hip adductor. The last one is this short muscle called the adductor grievous. You can see here this one is also going to originate on the inferior pubic ramus, just like the gracilis. But this one's going to cross uh, more immediately, and it's going to insert on the femur, just the medial aspect of the femur. Okay? Um, and so that being said, it's going to be a hip adductor. But again, the insertion is a little bit more anterior because the muscle actually runs a little bit anterior. So it's going to have a little bit of hip flexion as well. Now when we look at these last two muscles, the adductor brevis is solely innervated by the obturator nerve. However, uh, the adductor magnus really has two sources of innervation. One is the obturator nerve, and that's going to be more in the region of the medial part of the thigh where the obturator nerve is going to innervate the adductor magnus. However, for the deeper, more posterior fibers of the adductor magnus, those are the fibers, of course, that do more of the hamstring type of movements, uh, those are going to be innervated by the sciatic nerve, and that is the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve. Okay. Now I have one other topic to uh, mention in this video, and that has to do with the gracilis. Recall, I mentioned the gracilis as it runs down the medial aspect of the thigh, it inserts on the tibia, yes, but it's inserting on a, a site called the pes anserine. So what is the pes anserine? And actually another name for it is pes anserinus. So what is it? Well, it's a common insertion point for three muscles. So see three tendons right here in sequence. They're kind of all inserting right here on the medial part of this tibia. And this would actually be a right leg uh, because um, we have the semimembranosus and semitendinosus tendons right here. Those are actually the medial hamstring muscles. So if this is the medial aspect, it would have to be a right leg. But in any case, this would be the pes anserine right here, or pes anserinus. And the three muscles that have insertions here are, one, the sartorius. That's this one. The middle one is the gracilis. And this one over here, the third one, would be the semitendinosus, which is one of the hamstrings. And so all three of them kind of insert in this spot right here, which is called the pes inserinus. The only reason I mention that is, of course, first to define what it was, but also because that's the insertion of the gracilis. All right? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the adductor group muscles and their origins, insertions, innervations, and actions. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're going to be discussing the hamstring muscles. And then after that, we'll look at the gluteal muscles. Thank you.